Okay, welcome to Heartwood Online. This is a brand new 2D uh, MMORPG that's available on Steam, Android and iOS. So this is going to be a complete guide for beginners. Every aspect of the game that you need to know in order to get started out is going to be here in this video. So first of all, creating a new character. We've got nine different hairstyles to choose from. And we've also got five different hair colours to pick. I'm going to choose ginger and I'm going to be bold because later on I'm going to buy a beard. You've got four different skin colours as well. So we've got four classes as well. The first one, this is a melee class. So this guy has got good health, um, good defence and good damage. Going to obviously using close ranged weapons. Then we've got the rogue class. So this guy, as you see, masses of stealth and evasion. So this is a, a more fast paced play style where you're going to be moving around a lot. Uh, next we have the Priest, so this is the healer class of the game. You can do a little bit of damage and you can also heal your allies whilst you're attacking, which is quite a nice feature. And then lastly we've got the Mage, which like most MMORPGs, the Mage is good for DPS. Warrior you're a Mage are really um, DPS, same with Rogue. Warrior may be a little bit more tanky. So we're going to choose the name 3, as I'm a Patron supporter and I um, pre-registered the name. So my third class is going to be a mage because I've already made a priest and a warrior. Let's load it in. So once you've created your character, it's important to know that any character customization after this is going to cost you gold. Gold is earned in game. And if you want to unlock new bonus hairstyles, ones that aren't in the base game, then you can buy gems and you can unlock those. But yeah, do be warned that once you've chosen your hairstyle, see, I can be bold for nothing. They do cost money if you want to change them after that. Same with the colour of your hairstyle. So these guys cost 100 rather than just 50. Uh, if you're interested, you can also buy gems to uh, change your eye colour. And then you can also change your skin colour later on for 200 gold if you choose. This is um, outfit dye, so if you wanted to dye your outfit, then you're able to. Oh, just over here on the right, you can see we've got the legacy, so this is going to be an important part of the game. This writes down everything that you've done, so if you're going to be completing quests, if you there's going to be towns and cities later on in the game, so if you uh, you know break the law, get caught stealing, they're, they're planning to introduce lockpicking later on, so I'm sure if you get caught lockpicking, you might end up with a, a sort of tarnish against your name and your legacy, but it's all talk. It's it shows the history of your character, which I think is a brilliant feature of the MMO. So next, let's talk about the NPCs in the game. So this guy over here is the aging fur trapper. This is where you're going to get your first quest line of the game. I'm not going to spoil it too much. I do have a walkthrough on my uh, channel if you did want help doing that. Next, in the middle here, we've got the bank. Decent amount of storage. You can stack items higher in the bank than what you can in your inventory, which is quite nice. Here we've got Geraldo. He's the sort of beginner merchant. The shield, the, uh, the wooden buckler. The shield is a really good uh, early game item to buy if you can afford it. And likewise with the ragged hat for the mage class, that's also really good. Right, so we're just coming into the second town area of the map. I'll just open that up for you. You can see it's in the top right hand side of the map. Down here in the bottom left is the first town. So this is Ezra. This is the more upgraded NPC for when you're a bit of a when you're a slightly higher level. This is Kiva. So Kiva is going to give you your next quest line. This is going to be to collect the love letter, which is a rare drop, but you'll get it in time. Don't worry. That's a bit later on in the game. You should you should know what you're doing by the time you're you're trying to gather the love letter. And then the last NPC is just NPC. He's a uh, sat over here crying by a statue of a bunch of flowers I'm not sure what the story is there I don't think there is one yet but we will um we will find we will find out in due time so let's talk about leveling up first thing you're going to want to do is just come south and start killing rabbits the aim of the game really is to kill mobs that are the same level as you or a little bit higher the game actually stops you from gaining xp on mobs that are three levels or lower than you are than your current level that's just to stop really high level players from, you know, taking over the low level areas and just killing thousands of rabbits and not letting the new guys get a chance at anything. After the rabbits, you're going to want to head up here and kill the deer. 
So there's something with the mobs, you can see the deer's got a yellow name, that means he's a passive mob, so you have to f actually attack him first before he'll fight you. Same with the rabbits. Once you fought the low level deer, you're going to want to come up here and fight the slightly higher level deer. This is also where you're going to find the deer boss. I wouldn't recommend fighting him in the start of the game, he's a really, really powerful mob. Once you're comfortable with the deer, the next place you're going to want to head to is the swine pits. And this is the first time we're going to encounter a mob that is going to attack you without you attacking it. So you, if you're a low level, you're going to want to stay away from here. Wait until you're comfortable with the deer before you enter the swine pits. Okay, so I've had to swap over to my main character so I can show you guys the rest of the mobs in the game. So, like the deer, you're going to get tougher pigs. There's also pig bosses. You see down there is a level 13 boar. He's pretty tough. Once you're comfortable killing boar, it's time to enter the outer bone mines and start killing vultures. And as soon as you're comfortable killing the vultures, just keep going north up here to start fighting the skeletons. The next update in the game, Major Zone update, is going to be there through this door. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the skills. So if you go into your menu here and you open up your skills, there's eight skills currently in the game. We've got mining, woodcutting, fishing, which has not been added yet. Blacksmithing, carpentry, tailoring, leather working and herbalism are all in the game. So we'll go through these one by one. So mining is really simple. Just stay around spawn. You will start your character off with a tool belt already equipped with an axe and a pickaxe, which is quite nice. So you got to do go over to the coal start mining coal once you level that up you're going to want to start working your way through the ores so here we've got tin uh, a bit further north we've got copper and i believe there's also iron in the game as well so the next skill is wood cutting really simple head over to a tree and start chopping it down so soon we're going to have fishing in the game it's not currently here yet so there's nothing to talk about that so the next skill is blacksmithing really simple just come over to the blacksmithing workbench open it up the first thing you're going to want to be crafting is tin bars and as you level up your crafting you're going to be unlocking new stuff to craft. So similar to the smithing bench for woodworking just head over to the woodworking bench open this guy up and you can start crafting wooden boards which you can then use to build axes, swords um, and other items. The more you level that up eventually you'll start to unlock new things that you can craft. So next on the list is tailoring. All you're going to want to do is head over to the tailoring workbench like the others. Start crafting light cotton fabric and then you're going to be able to use that to craft items for the priest and the mage classes. Again, once you start to level up, you'll be able to craft more things. So Fred is unlocked a little bit later on. So the next skill is going to be leather working. This one, again, it's got its own workbench and it works exactly the same as the others. Start crafting materials. As you level up, you're going to start unlocking new things that you can craft. At the moment herbalism's leveled up by just gathering cotton. I assume later on in the game we're going to have potions and we're going to be able to gather other sorts of plants to level up our herbalism and start crafting potions and no doubt upgrade our potion skill tree. So the last thing you need to know about really is your abilities. So if you see in the bottom right there I've already unlocked two of my abilities. The first one is the same for all classes. That is your healing ability. You're then going to unlock your next one. These are unique for each class so I'm not going to go too in depth right now about them just so that I don't spoil them for you but the next one is unlocked at level 5 and then the last one is unlocked at level 15. I believe the plan in the future is to keep unlocking more as time goes on and you'll be able to build certain classes by choosing different abilities. Right so every time you level up you're going to get two talent points. These can be spent in either health, armor, attack power, magic power, critical chance, critical damage, health regeneration, dodge chance, focus. Focus is um so if you get stunned or slowed by an enemy, it's going to reduce the effect, like the time that that lasts for. And then uh, lastly, cooldown reduction on abilities, which is what I think is going to be pretty OP later in the game for the priest class. But that's all the information you need really to get started out in Heartwood. If there's anything I've not mentioned that you want me to talk about, drop a uh, comment below and I'll reply to your comment or I might even make a second video if it's something really important that I've totally forgotten.